What's up people, it's DevSage here and in this video we're going to be going over web workers. So what is a web worker? A web worker is simply a JavaScript process that runs in the background of a web page. JavaScript by default is single threaded. There is one thread or execution path and this thread is known as the main thread. The main thread is responsible for executing all of the JavaScript for a web page, one line at a time. A web worker is basically a separate JavaScript thread that allows you to execute multiple threads of JavaScript in parallel with each other. So instead of the main thread having to do all of the heavy lifting by itself, a web worker can be created to offload any computationally expensive work so that the main thread doesn't get bogged down and can continue executing some other code. One main difference between the main thread and a web worker thread is that web workers cannot perform any DOM manipulation. Only the main thread can access and manipulate the DOM. This is important to note. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of where a web worker could come in handy. So over here, we have uh, two files here. We have our index.html and our script.js. And what we have here is we have two buttons on the page. One of the button is a change background button. And all it does is when you click it, it changes the background between blue and green. And that script looks like this. Something simple, adding a click listener to the background button and toggling the color of the background between blue and green. Okay, cool. The other button is the calculate sum button. And when this button is clicked, what's going to happen is it's going to find the sum of all of the numbers from one to 10 billion. And that happens here. It, when it finds that sum, it's going to alert the final sum is the sum. So that was kind of computationally expensive, right? I click the button and if I try to change the background, if I try to click change background, I can't actually change the background. What's happening is the main thread is being locked up right now. It's stuck in this for loop. Remember JavaScript is single threaded. There's only one path of execution. And if we have some expensive body of work that it, it could potentially block up the main thread and prevent anything else from happening right now, um, I, the user can't do anything else on the page because the, the main thread is locked up. This is definitely not ideal. And this is where web workers come in. We can create a web worker in order to offload this expensive CPU work such that the main thread doesn't have to get blocked up and the web worker could actually do the work for us in parallel. And the main thread and any worker threads that we create can communicate with each other in order to pass data to and from each other. So let's see how to do that. Let's see how a web worker works. Well, in order to spin up a new web worker, we need to go to the top here and we need to create a new instance of a worker. So we can say const worker equals new worker. Okay, the worker constructor takes in a path to a worker script. So we actually don't have that script yet. So let's go over here and let's create a new file. Let's call this worker.js. Let's go back here and let's pass in worker.js. Okay, we just created a new worker and we passed in the file name for that worker script and here it is. Okay, so what do we want to do now? Well, it's important to understand how a worker works. Like how can we basically pass data to and from this script and the worker script? Well, the way we pass data, the way we can offload some data to a worker is by using the post message API. The post message API essentially just raises an event from one script 
that another script can catch or listen to. So the way we do that, so if we go to the worker here, we can set up an event listener to listen for new post messages. So the way we do that is we say self dot on message equals some function that takes in the message. So we're basically just creating a new event handler for the on message event. So whenever we get a new post message, we need to do some work. Self here is a reference to the worker. The worker itself has an on message event listener. So that's why we're saying self dot on message. So you can think about it like whenever you create a new worker script, the worker object is the global object for that script. So self here is referring to the worker, kind of like how the global object for a regular JavaScript that's embedded in the web page is the window object. So the global object here is window, whereas the global object in a worker is actually the worker. So technically we don't even need this self right here. We can just say on message equals function and which takes in the message. Okay. So what can we do in this on message? So basically we're saying when we receive a new message, let's do something with that message. Let's just print the message out. So let's just say console log message. Okay. So we set our worker up to listen for a new post message. Now in our regular, in our main thread, let's actually send a message to that worker. So let's, uh, let's comment this out for now and let's comment this out too. So when the button is clicked, instead of doing all this work, let's just send a new message to the worker. So let's just say worker dot post message in this inside of the post message uh, call here, we can pass in any data that we want to send to the worker. So in this case, let's just send, um, let's just send hello worker. Okay. So now what happens when we click the sum button is the worker will get sent a post message with the data. Hello worker. And the worker is going to listen for that message and print it out. So let's click this calculate some. Okay, cool. So down here, you can see that we printed out the message event that was caught by the worker here. And inside of this message event in the data property, we have our hello worker uh, data that we passed in from the main thread. Okay. So now let's focus on moving some of that computationally expensive code from the main script into the worker. Okay. So let's just take this, let's copy this and paste it into our worker. Oops. All right. Let's align this properly. Okay. And we don't, we actually don't need any of the information from inside of the message in this example. So we can remove this console log. Okay. So now what we've done is we've taken that big heavy for loop that was blocking up the main thread and we moved it into our worker. So now the worker thread is going to be doing all this work in a background process that won't stop the main thread from continuing to execute what it, what it needs to do. So now what's going to happen is when we click, uh, let's say we click calculate sum. Okay. We clicked it. The worker is currently running that loop, but if we try to change the background, we can see that we're not blocked anymore, but now we have a problem because the worker is doing all this work, but it's not actually telling the main thread whenever it's done. So the main thread actually doesn't know what the sum is. So what we can do is in the same way that we can pass a message from the main script to the worker, we can pass information from the worker back to the main script. We do that by setting up an on message listener for the worker in the main script. So we can say worker dot on message equals some function and pass in the message event. And now 
what we can do is we can um, let's console log the message that we get back okay so in the main thread we're setting up an event listener from the worker whenever we get a message from the worker let's just print that message out so now back in the worker we actually need to send a message so we do that with the same post message API we can post a message back to the main thread with the sum that we got from doing all this expensive work so let's just say post message um, and we can pass in sum. okay cool so let's see how this behaves now so let's click calculate sum. nothing appears to happen at first but now let's try to change the background as you can see we're allowed to change the background now the worker is in the background calculating the sum but we're still allowed to change the background and down here you, you can see that we just got this message event here uh, this message is being logged from the worker responding to the main thread here this is what this is how this is being printed and inside of here we should have a data property yep so we have this data property which represents the sum that the worker just calculated behind the scenes so now what we can do is we can bring this alert down and we can say alert the final sum is message dot data so that's what that's where the sum is going to be located and let's get rid of this uh, so now let's rerun this so if we say calculate sum the worker is currently processing all of this work and we can change background we don't have to block up the main thread the main thread is free to do whatever it wants and when the worker is finished it's going to post a message back yep and it, we just got it the listener on the main thread is going to listen for that message and call alert and that's just what happened okay so I hope that made sense web workers are really really effective it allows you to offload some expensive work to some background thread that can do the work and then let you know whenever it's finished via this post message API so I hope that helped if you like this video be sure to leave a like subscribe if you want to see more content if you want more web dev explained simply be sure to check out some of my other videos and yeah other than that peace